Chapter 4.9.14 It might be immoral to claim that war is immoral. The common argument against pacifism. You may not be interested in war, but war is interested in you. Leon Trotsky Reference 111 One of the most successful military commanders of all time was a son-in-law descendant of Genghis Khan, Timur the Great. Generally undefeated in battle, it is estimated that 5% of the global human population were killed during the 14th century Timurid conquests and invasions. During the establishment of the Timurid Empire, some cities fell so quickly that Timurid armies didn't even need to kill their contenders or haul their bodies to their graves. In some cases, the conquered would dig their own mass graves and then be buried in them while still alive. Reference 112. The Timurid conquests serve as one of many examples in history, illustrating a fundamental flaw with pacifism. Pacifists literally dig their own graves. According to the Oxford Dictionary, pacifism is a belief that war is unjustifiable under any circumstances and that all disputes can and should be settled by peaceful means. The problem with this assertion is that it relies on unrealistic views about nature and human behavior. For people to become pacifists, they must believe there is an alternative to physical power as a basis for keeping people safe and secure against predators that is equally as capable of keeping people secure as physical power is, despite many examples that it isn't. Unfortunately, there does not appear to be a viable alternative to physical power that has the same complex properties needed to keep people secure against invaders and oppressors. When populations refuse to master the art of projecting physical power to secure themselves, the outcome is often the same. Mass graves dug by the pacifists themselves, people who are clearly willing to die without putting up a fight. Pacifists seek peaceful adjudication to all property or policy disputes. The problem with this approach is that it requires a judge or jury, people with abstract power appointed by an abstract power hierarchy, to make a judgment about the dispute. Peaceful adjudication therefore requires a trust in a judge or jury to cast impartial or fair judgments. Note how the term fair in this context is subjective, thus not impartial. Peaceful adjudication also requires common consensus as well as trust in the people being judged to honor their judgment. These all seem like good ideas in theory, but they rely on an unrealistic assumption that these conditionalities can and will be met, and that people are going to remain sympathetic to their verdict. As history makes abundantly clear, it's not possible for these conditions to be met all the time. Sooner or later, Tamer or one of his many reincarnations are going to be unsympathetic to people's desires for peaceful adjudication. An impolite but simple argument to make against pacifism is that pacifists are self-domesticated animals who are unfit for survival in a world filled with predators. Pacifists forfeit their capacity and inclination to project physical power for abstract reasons, usually because of the energy it expends or the injury it causes. History makes it very clear what happens to pacifists. Their belief systems get psychologically exploited or their resources get physically captured or invaded. They get oppressed by corrupt, unimpeachable rulers or they get steamrolled by unfriendly neighbors who don't subscribe to the same pacifist ideologies. We have thousands of years of detailed, written testimony about this, but somehow people keep allowing themselves to forget the moral of the story. It could be argued that pacifism is what happens when people spend too much time with the friendly, docile, domesticated versions of themselves, or watch too many carefully edited videos of nature which have the unforgiving, brutal, and cruel parts, the most natural parts, filtered out. Pacifism is what happens when generations of people spend their entire lives outsourcing their physical security and predation to other people, so they don't have to experience the discomfort associated with these activities. They spend their lives without having to earn their food or their freedom of action, without having to kill the animals they eat or to kill the people who are unsympathetic to their desire to live comfortably with the property and policies they value. 
it should come as no surprise that these types of people can develop distorted points of view about reality. Pacifists are people who become spoiled by the spoils of war, oblivious to the reason why they can afford to forget about Tamur. Successful populations can get so comfortable living their leisurely, sedentary, and domestic lives that they gain the luxury of developing unchallenged, imaginary beliefs about the world. Worlds where people aren't actively capturing and securing access to everything using brutal force, physical power, and where pacifists themselves don't directly benefit from this behavior. Pacifists appear to live in an imaginary world that does not exist, one devoid of predators. Perhaps because they have little experiential knowledge of wild nature from the safety and comforts of their neatly structured, unharassed societies. By practically all written accounts, this world has never actually existed. Modern agrarian society appears to have always been physically fighting each other intermittently. It is incontrovertibly true that forfeiture of physical power makes a population physically powerless to defend themselves. Moreover, there are clear, causal, inferable relationships between physical power projection and prosperity. Or conversely, there is a clear, causal, inferable relationship between pacifism and mass graves. It is therefore just as easy to argue that warfare is justifiable in some cases and that mastering the art of warfighting is just as morally imperative for society. History makes it clear that pacifism is a security hazard. So it could just as easily be argued that it's unethical for pacifists to motivate people to adopt pacifist ideologies which make them demonstrably insecure against predation. This same line of reasoning has been repeated many times throughout history. The lessons of history tell us why it's strategically crucial for populations not to allow themselves to believe that physical power competitions are bad for society, just because they use a lot of energy or because they risk injury. When pacifists morally condemn the use of physical power, they contribute to a systemic security hazard which commonly invites invasion or oppression invasion and oppression predators feed on weakness oppressors benefit from the sanctimonious peer pressure of pacifists who condemn physical aggression oppressors want their population to be passive passive populations are physically docile and their belief systems are easy to exploit again this isn't dogma speaking it is incontrovertibly true that docility leads directly to slaughter we have more than three dozen naturally randomized A-B testing experiments between wild and domesticated animals to causally infer a link between lack of physical aggression and systemic scale exploitation. There is a clear causal inferable relationship between pacifism and exploitation upon which humans continuously take advantage of. It is a matter of fact that bores don't experience peace when they are selectively bred to be less physically powerful and aggressive. They experience being turned into bacon. Our civilization was built upon making animals docile and exploiting them at massive scale to plow our fields and fill our stomachs. Sapiens are animals too. It's unreasonable to believe we aren't equally vulnerable to the same threat. For whatever reason, People keep allowing themselves to forget the basic lesson of domestication despite how often it reappears in history or reappears in their daily lives. The lesson is simple. Systemic exploitation or abuse is a byproduct of people who don't use physical power to settle their disputes, not a byproduct of people who do. Remove a population's capacity and inclination to impose severe physical costs on their neighbors and they will face severe systemic security problems. If it's true for aurochs, boars, and jungle fowl, then it is reasonable to expect it to be true for primates like sapiens. A human population's aversion to physical aggression and their forfeiture of physical power is likely to be a direct contributing factor to insecurity. It could be possible that foreign invasion and egregious levels of loss associated with wide-scale systemic exploitation by corrupt government officials is directly attributable to pacifism, to the people who don't 
project physical power to impose severe physical cost on those who attack or abuse them. That makes it just as easy to morally condemn people who aren't physically aggressive as it is to condemn people who are. At least the people who assert that physical power and aggression is good can back it with billions of years of empirical evidence. They can point to the animals which enjoy the highest levels of freedom and self-agency in the world and note how mean and aggressive they are, how strong they are, how sharp their teeth and their nails are. That's probably not a coincidence. Americans attempted to peacefully declare independence via a piece of paper in 1776, but that independence wasn't formally acknowledged until thousands of British soldiers were slain over the following seven years. Years after winning that fight, the Constitution was written. Our founding fathers were aware of the emergent benefits of physical power and also well acquainted with the threat of an overreaching and abusive government. They understood that people who allow themselves to forfeit their ability to project physical power for theological, philosophical, or ideological reasons are people who forfeit their own security. This is precisely why the U.S. Constitution has a Second Amendment. In conclusion, those who understand how domestication works can understand why pacifism is as easy to call an unethical and immoral bane to society as the war fighting it condemns. Villainizing the use of physical power, Watts, to impose severe physical costs on potential attackers is perhaps the worst strategic blunder a freedom-loving society could make. Pacifism causes populations to adopt the exact opposite strategy they need to remain safe and secure. They cause populations to become weak, complacent, docile, and unfit to survive in a congested, contested, competitive, and hostile environment filled with predators and entropy.